Officer, they've got us range. Get to him. He can't be allowed to get off a message. Magnet, Jaguar Magnet. Adventure Viper, move to these coordinates. Where the hell? Hold your position, Panther. He's way out of gun time. Hit him, get his attention. Sir, I, I... Do it! Got its attention, sir. Now move out. Roger that! Follow this path. Turn. Take the turn. Almost there. I can't keep up this pace! Now take the next right. Commander, this is a dead end. I don't have jump jets. I know what you've got. Hold your position. Damn it, sir. I need some help. Here it comes. Panther, finish him. Welcome back to a very special Let's Play series. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're going to be playing through Mech Commander. Well, we're not going to play through the whole game today, but we're going to start our playthrough, and we're going to play through this entire game. Uh, now we're oh, we're greeted here in this game with this awesome cutscene here. I love the fact that they were mixing live action with the CGI Battletech scenes. It was my dream in high school that they would make a live action Battletech show. I just thought it would be so cool. And this is like the closest thing that I ever really got uh, to, to getting that at the time. And I thought this looked so cool back, back when I first saw it uh, in high school. So basically the premise is you are part of a uh, Davian attack force or Davian. I don't know how to say it. I only ever read the, the name in books when I was a kid. So Davian, Davian, take your pick. You're part of an inner sphere task force that is helping to invade Clan Smoke Jaguar territory as part of the reunified Star League's sort of thrust into clan space to drive back the invasion. Um, so this game takes entirely, it takes place entirely on the planet of Port Arthur. Um, as, and as you can see, there's going to be some hot mech warrior action here. Uh, now, now my, many of the, the mech warrior games that were popular right before Mech Commander came out were the sort of mech warrior two style games where you were actually piloting a mech. So it was kind of seen as somewhat novel to be in control of a squad of mechs. And as you can see, we're getting dominated here by a uh, Smoke Jaguar Mad Cat. Um, and we have the commander here issuing move orders to his units and they are listening. So in typical Battletech games, you would actually be piloting one of those, those mechs and you would have to take down the Mad Cat. But in this game, you have just a squad of dudes um, and you have to sort of order them around in order to uh, win the battle. And actually, that is a return to form for Battletech because Battletech is not a first, you know, it started off as a board game. It was, it's not a first person shooter and it never was originally. It's interesting that the MechWarrior series became so popular and people thought of Battletech as the MechWarrior series, basically. But if you look at the early computer games, like the Crescent Hawks games that I've played um, for you guys, those are basically RPGs or tactical strategy games. If you look at the old board game and stuff, um, which I think is still around. It is a, a tactical, uh, you know, command game like this. So it's cool. Oh yeah, there. This is this is totally a strategy too. I like how the game is revealing that uh, there's weak points on the rear of mechs. Like that Mad Cat is just screwed. Yeah, he's getting taken down by a raven. How embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> that clan warrior is going to have a lot to explain. Oh, no, never mind. He got killed. His mech full-on exploded. I like how panicked the mech warriors are and stuff. 
They're all like sweaty in their mechs. Hey Panther, did you miss us? He's getting uh, ribbed on by his colleagues there. <laughs> Look at those buttons! Did you see those buttons on the dashboard? That was like a sticker. There were there they couldn't afford buttons. <laughs> they had to draw them on the monitor. Wow. Yeah, I mean it's it, the cutscenes are cool, but obviously you know most of the budget went towards actually making the game. And, uh, yeah, so I'm excited, I'm excited to actually play this one here today. Um, I do remember, like, this game, it plays very loose and fast with the Battletech rules. It's, uh, you know, as you'll see as we start playing, you get to customize your mechs and stuff. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't strictly follow the, the Battletech rule set. And so, yeah, I, I would consider this sort of a Battletech-themed game. Uh, as opposed to sort of, you know, uh, actually a Battletech game. It's a, it's a Mech Commander game. We had Mech Warrior, which played fast and loose with the Battletech rules. Now we have Mech Commander. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump into the campaign here. Incoming transmission. Davian Guards, our first battalion is on planet. We caught the smoke jaguar off guard, but just barely. They were able to activate the planet's orbital guns and caught the dropship York before she landed. We have lost all contact, so assume X-Ray Company is out of the picture. Yankee and Zulu Companies, you'll pick up the slack as well as any survivors and equipment that can be used. While those guns keep us pinned down, support will be limited, so salvage is a priority. Davians, make no mistake. Despite the loss of X-Ray Company, our battle plan is intact. We will take this planet back. I'm downloading your mission briefings. Move to destroy the designated clan targets and we'll gain a beachhead before they can react. The town will make special equipment available as required. All right, so there's our mission. Uh, before we hop into the mission, let's sort of orient ourselves here. So here's our mission briefing. Destroy Camp Alpha headquarters. Destroy all three garrison buildings and destroy Camp Beta headquarters. Uh, we have no artillery support. And if you want a description of the mission, here you go. I usually, I, I think I read these originally when I played the game, but I very quickly sort of moved away from, stopped reading them uh, when I played it back in the day. You can uh, purchase mechs. Uh, none are available, <laughs> available zero right now. You can also purchase mech warriors. Uh, we, there are none available. You can purchase items. Uh, so like lasers. Now, one, one trick of this game is that PPCs are just overpowered. Um, and we're gonna be we're very quickly gonna switch into a PPC mode here um, You can also buy vehicles. So like uh, Minesweepers Mine layers. I actually don't remember Actually, maybe I did I was gonna say I don't remember playing around with the vehicles too much But maybe I did and uh, we'll we'll make sure to throw at least a vehicle in at some point uh, if you go into the mech bay you can, well, first of all, you can assign different mech warriors. This is uh, the beast. This you know, is the beast. The mechs, if you want. This so is the we'll beast. put the beast in. Um, here are the, this is the loadout of the, the different uh, mechs. So, by the way, every mech, like a commando, has three variants. A is for armor, W is for weapons, and J is for jump jets. A means they have more armor, W means more space for weapons, and J means they have jump jets. Um, ooh, this guy already has a PPC. That's actually pretty sweet. Now, you can basically load out any mech in any way that you want. You just drag pieces of them off, and then you can sort of put pieces on. Um, I'm going to stick with the default loadouts for this first little mission here. But as I say, very quickly, we're going to start customizing our mechs um, in different ways. And also, so as I hover over different weapons in the bottom left there, you'll see information about them. Every weapon has a recycle time, which is how many seconds it takes before it can fire again. So this game specifically does not have a heat system, which deviates heavily from a normal Battletech game. You also don't load out weapons in any particular section of your mech, uh, even though they can get damaged in different sections. But anyway, yeah, so laser has a five second uh, recycle time, does two damage. An SRM pack has a four second recycle time, does one damage. Actually, that is way worse. Why do I have... Why do I have a bunch of SRM packs? We switch these out for lasers? That would presumably be way better, wouldn't it? And this is a 10 second recycle time does one damage. Um, I guess actually, in order to maximize damage. Oh wait, a heavy flamer. Seven and a half second, but 
five damage. You know, we're gonna go heavy flame around this. I said we weren't gonna really customize this, uh, the first go around, but whatever. There we go. We switched him from all those SR impacts to two lasers and a heavy flamer. So the trick for this game is that you want to have your mechs do as much damage as possible up front. Recycle time doesn't matter that much. If you have a squad of mechs that basically in the first punch can take an, it can cripple an enemy mech, that's what you want. So that basically by the time the enemy is sort of standing back up, they have no weapons left. So you want to have tons of damage up front. Recycle time can be slower, and if you do that, you'll be just fine. Anyway, we don't really need to customize too much because this first fight is pretty easy. So let's just go ahead and throw our dudes in and begin Commence our mission. Mech warriors, prepare for combat. I have a new sensor train. All right, so here's our dudes. You can make them walk or you can make them run. Holding space and then clicking somewhere will make them run. You can tell them to engage at different ranges. If they had jump jets, you could engage jump jets. We're going to hide these controls because we don't need them. If you want to play the game, um sort of crippled you can zoom in i think it's actually right here so yeah you get like you know more of a view of what's happening but yeah i don't know i i feel like i don't know why you'd want to play the game that zoomed in you definitely want to be zoomed out as you play um and other than that this first mission as i say is pretty straightforward we're basically just going to uh run over and destroy a couple of uh, enemy command posts we'll fight a few mechs on the way as typically happens, but we're getting start. We're, we're starting off with a bunch of light mechs, um, and obviously, very quickly, you want to move to heavy mechs. I feel like if there was one fatal flaw in BattleTech as a universe, it's that, at least as far as computer games have treated it, heavier mechs are always better. Heavier mechs are just de facto better than lighter mechs, um, and video games and stuff always start you with the lightest mechs. I always felt like they should have worked a little more to make it like a rock, paper, scissors thing where like a couple of light mechs could take down an assault mech because they're more maneuverable. Um, but that speed is the only thing keeping them alive. Whereas an assault mech could take down a heavy because it has more firepower and like a heavy could take down a medium. So sort of like you need a mix of mechs because if you have just assault, then a bunch of light mechs will come around like flies flying around you and you won't be able to swat them away. Um, I feel like that is what the modern... There's a modern Battletech game called Battletech by Harebrain Schemes. And it's a turn-based tactical game, but it's all 3D like this. And I feel like they really did try to give light mechs an advantage. And they gave them more maneuverability and stuff like that. So uh, definitely kudos to them. But in these older Battletech games, the light mechs suck. You basically use them until you get something better. So that's basically what we're doing. We're, only, we're really only destroying cars, so it doesn't really matter um and no problem, laser sir. turrets later on you actually get to attack bases and you can like capture turrets and stuff and turn them against the defenders it's actually pretty sweet so here's our first mech a commando a or a smoke jaguar command i don't know why the smoke jaguars are using inner sphere mechs but maybe this was like uh capture a captured mech or something like that anyway as you can see he's just getting demolished so we, the, the first punch, I don't know if you're paying attention, but the first punch really damaged him quite a bit. Here, there goes his pilot. I like how he ejects there. Um, if you forget what you're doing, you can go to the briefing tab. If you select a unit, you can go to the data tab and you can see front and rear armor and you can also check out its payload. We select a guy with ammo. We can see how much ammo he has left. So it's actually useful to figure out if your mechs are going to run dry soon. Um, and actually, what are we supposed to do here? Destroy the garrison buildings. Yes, sir. All right, no problem, so sir. these things. Who wants to there are also mech repair bays that you end up capturing when you do capture, like, enemy bases. No problem, no so problem. you can actually even repair your mechs in the field. No problem, there we My go. Mission objective complete. All right, now we just have one more mission. Although, there's a dude down here. You can also capture components on the map. Like, sometimes there'll be, like, a component warehouse, and if you take it over, you can... Ooh, look, a little strip mall. That's cool. Oh, it's like <laughs> some guy's random car showed up on our radar. Well, we won't kill him. This is cool, like a whole little town here. Um, if you can find uh, just, just uh, warehouses as you're playing through, or, like, cargo shipping containers, 
You can sometimes capture parts and that will be added to your salvage. So a huge part of Battletech is not just winning the battle, but winning with with salvage. So the thing that's always fascinated me about me about Battletech that has always fascinated me about Battletech, yes, I said that correctly, is the fact that it's not just sort of a tactical game uh, where it's like you have to go in, you have to win the fight. It's like you have to win the fight, but it has to be economically advantageous. So if you take too much damage and like you lose pilots or mechs get destroyed and you don't have any salvage, then you could win the fight, but actually sort of your mercenary unit is not going to survive very long. Um, now we're technically not mercenaries here. We're technically sort of a military force, but it plays very mercenary-like where, um, you know, we have to uh, maintain our own supply uh, caches, our own sort of, uh, you know, our own reserve of pieces and pilots and mechs. And so if we go into a lot of fights and we don't do very well, then, you know, we're, we're not going to do very well in the game overall, so... Um, yeah, that guy's getting demolished. Off he goes. Did we salvage him? Oh, we totally did! So we got an Uller W, the weapon variant, and a Clan ER laser, and a Clam... A Clan Streak SRM pack. I think I called it a Clam. A Clan Streak SRM pack. Uh, and now what do we have to do? No Just problem, destroy sir. stuff. I think we have to destroy Wait, the headquarters. Let's see if there's problem, anything sir. to capture. There's the not. Mission. Now, there might be hidden things somewhere else on the map, but... Uh, you know... That's the first mission, anyway. Pretty easy. Nice and easy and simple. Um, if you go in under the dropway, you get a little bit of a bonus, so there we go. Probably could have taken two mechs and done just fine. But anyway, next mission. So now, if we go into our mech bay, you can see we have an Uller. And if we want, we can field it. First, of course, we have to repair it. That would cost money, so I don't know if I want to do that yet. Uh, we're definitely going to take this Clan ER laser and the ER pack off of it though. So whatever we do, if we if we repair that mech, if we don't, whatever. Um, but now in our components, we have a clan ER laser. And so if we compare it to our laser, uh, recycle time five seconds, damage two. Clan is the exact same damage, but its range is medium, meaning it can fire at a much further range. And look, ours has a loadout value, so basically a weight of four. The clan is 3.5, so you can actually fit more of these on a mech, and they have a longer range, so we're definitely probably going to swap that out. Before we do that, though, let's check out our mission. Capture supplies from the Bondsman Field Camp. Uh, capture the prison barn and free its prisoners. Escort the APC. Capture the mobile uh, vehicle. Okay, so that's sort of a secondary, uh, secondary objective. So... Let's see if we can purchase any cool mechs. Uh, yeah, okay. So we can get a commando or a fire starter. We kind of don't want those. What we would really want is like a catapult, a Jaeger mech, an awesome, or an atlas. The beast. And actually, you can see the different variants. You can even have a jump variant of an awesome, actually. Um, he has the same, I think the same weapon loadout as the armor. So he's literally just swapping armor. Wow, armor goes from very heavy to moderate. Not worth it, in my opinion. But the weapon variant... Wow, two ER PPCs. A, a Gauss rifle. Pretty cool. Um, anyway, none of that's available, so we, we really shouldn't focus on it. Let's see if we can purchase some PPCs, though, because that could actually be uh, advantageous to us. Long range. Nope, there's the PPC. Not available still. We're not high enough priority in the uh, invasion force to qualify by any of that stuff. There's even like sensor suites and stuff, so it's like you can get ravens and stuff, as you guys saw in the opening montage. Uh, anyway, what's our uh, one other thing you have to pay attention to is your drop weight limit. So we are limited to 80 tons. So if you go and you look at your max, 25 tons, 25 tons, 30. So we could take all three of these guys, and that would be 80 tons. I think. I am actually going to end up swapping out my fire starter for uh, this this Uller. Might as well. Clan mechs typically are better than inner sphere mechs. We'll just repair all these just because. This is Lynx. The so Lynx, this is you're Link. actually going to go in the Uller. 
And do we want a streak SRM pack? Actually, that's pretty good. Three and two. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and equip this thing. PPC, LRM rack, basic sensors. I guess we'll take... Nah, eh, how much does this weigh? 4.75. That's kind of an awkward amount. Okay. So basically, so notice my payload, it kind of has like a gap there. You don't want that gap. You want to try and have as little gap as possible. Um, so, and, and one thing that's annoying is it doesn't tell you the exact number that you have left in your payload. So yeah, I kind of have to guess. So 4.75 gets it almost there. So I have five, really. Is there anything cool I could buy for five? Uh, heavy flamers, eight. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything is exactly five. All right, we'll, we'll have a slightly inefficient payload here. But an LR, a long-range missile rack will be useful. So my strategy going into this game is to basically slowly shift towards long-range missiles and PPCs with a couple of lasers or heavy flamers for um, close-range support. Uh, but boom, all right, so capture. We're, we're just capturing everything this time around. We got this. All right. Oh, and we have an APC, too. Okay, you, you are going to stay back, APC. You have command groups down here, so you can just with, like, uh, one key, you no can problem, select, uh, you know, a whole group. You can also assign new command groups, so, like, if you want Hunter to be, like, on his new own, he can be the leader of his own uh, group, but I'm going to put him new back in with the selected. others. <laughs> you can also, as you see, burn down trees. One kind of interesting thing is when you light a forest on fire, it, uh, it will show up on enemy sensors. Uh, basically because your sensors pick up, like, heat. So, if you're in the visual space, you'll see what it is. But if you're in the dark area, it will just show up as, like, a random contact, which is kind of funny. Uh, another mechanic of this game is hills. So, always go up on hills, and as you can see, once you get the high ground, it is easy to see what is going on around you. And destroy all these armored cars. These cars literally do nothing. Oh, look, there's little dudes running away from them. Hey, what is that? Ooh, a Highlander. I think he's firing a, a, a Goss rifle at us. Look, there was like, there's like little uh, survivors fleeing. <laughs> you can target them if you want, but that just feels cruel. I'm going to let those people survive. Here's a container stack. So that will, uh, that will have some salvage for us. Some sweet, sweet salvage once we kill this Highlander guy. Right now, we're not powerful enough, but give it time. Once we get another mech or two and we get a few more PPCs, there's no way this guy would get that many shots on us. All right, he's going down. Go down! Don't get up, man! Just don't get up! Is that his pilot running away? Oh, it's like his arm or something flew off. Yeah, he has no weapons now. So when his health bar is gone, but he's still moving around, it means you've crippled him. He has no weapons. Uh, we did salvage him, though, which is great. Now, as we capture this container, two clan streak SRM packs. Eh, I don't care. Uh, I want clan ERP. Clan ER PPCs are where it's at. So an inner sphere ER PPC, 7.5 seconds to reload, and does 7.5 points damage, which is actually quite a bit. Few weapons in the game do more than that. The clan ER PPC is a long-range weapon as opposed to medium, which normal PPCs are. Also has seven and a half seconds to reload, but uh, the clan ER PPC does 11.25 damage, which is, I think, I think there's like a couple weapons that go beyond that, but other than that, it's, it's you know, you don't get much better than that. So, anyway, uh, let's... Let's go over here. I feel like this is the way we're supposed to go in the map, so. We're gonna follow over this way. You can also right click on your dudes and you'll sort of like uh, follow them. You'll take the map away. Yeah, so you can just sort of like, kind of feels like playing Diablo at this point, you know, like the camera's following the, the mechs, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but anyway, let's go over here and here. I feel like this map gets a little bit in the way. It, I will admit, the map is a little annoying, but, you know, what can you do? All right, it's good to sort of 
follow some of these roads just to see if you can find like a hidden base that has like extra components or something. It reminds me a lot of uh, the Crescent Hawk's Revenge, the level where you have to raid the Deerian uh, prisons. Um, it's actually a really brutal level. You land on an alien planet. Well, not an alien. You land on a Curita occupied planet and you have to like fight your way through these mountains and fight all these these you know opposing forces and then you have to go into the city and try and like break into a prison but you're really worn out from the the fight through the mountains but if you explore the map a little in the top left corner or top right corner of the map there's like a mech bay and you can like upgrade for the next mission into like heavily armored mechs so it's one of those things where i feel like this game i, I don't know if they ever acknowledged it but i feel like they took a few cues from the crescent hawks and introduced um, some elements from it, like finding hidden bases that have extra supplies. Also, the whole idea of being able to call down uh, strikes. So this is a large strike. I'll see if I can show that to you guys in this mission, but I mean, we'll definitely use some strikes before we're done playing. But basically you call down artillery or aerospace support. And that is something that again, was in the Crescent Hawks Revenge, like back in the 80s or early 90s. I don't remember that ever being in another Battletech game until, uh, until this one, so... I feel like there's some subtle influence. Some subtle influence of, uh, of the Crescent Hawks Revenge, which I am all in favor of. Crescent Hawks Revenge was a great game. And the more that, uh, people reference it, the better. Ooh, that is an LRM. Uh, wait, wait, wait. You get back over here. Where are you going? Where are you going? Capture that. All right, so we captured the mobile headquarters. And so that revealed to us... Ooh, there's two mechs there. I'm going to show you guys a large strike on those guys. Uh, but before we do, four auto cannons were in this container stack. Well, that's something. Um, ooh, we're actually supposed to capture that prison barn, so we probably don't want to destroy it. Will this destroy it? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, hopefully it doesn't destroy the barn, it just does some damage to it. So for these artillery strikes, the large ones obviously uh, do more damage in a bigger area, the small ones do less damage in a smaller area. Oh no, we failed! <laughs> I thought that barn was made of sturdier stuff. Okay, let's try this again. This second time around, we're gonna run through a little faster and we're not going to strike our, uh, our own base. Pro tip, if you're supposed to rescue people in a barn, don't destroy the barn. That is not good. Okay, we're just gonna run through this real quick because I kind of remember like what was over here and there's like, besides the Hollander, there are not really any like big forces to oppose us. In fact, we can probably, can we probably strike this guy? Yeah, we can. He'll probably just stand there. Oh no, you stay there. You stay put. You stay put. Don't, don't you go anywhere. Three, two, one. Kaboom! He's like, what the hell just happened? What just hit me? And then you can't capture things when enemies are too close. That's why I can't capture this right now. That's okay, though. Hey, can we destroy this guy already? One problem... Here's here's another reason why something like the PPC is way better than a bunch of lasers. The way Battletech works is you can hit uh, guys in different areas. So if we go in here, you can see his arm is damaged, you know, his rear armor is fine, and so on. Now, in theory, what you want to do is like blow his arm off or blow apart his torso. Every time you fire a weapon, it is a chance of hitting a different area of the mech. So if you have like six lasers, they could conceivably all hit a separate part of the mech and no single part will be damaged enough to be destroyed. However, if you have hard hitting weapons like PPCs, if two PPCs happen to hit the same area, you can literally obliterate it. So the, the, the real benefit in this game of having hard hitting weapons is that when you have a bunch of light hitting weapons, on paper you might be doing more damage, but practically that damage is going to be split up more amongst the different areas of your enemies and they will survive longer. 
So it's actually better to do less damage in larger amounts, in larger single shot weapons than to, uh, you know, spread it out. So another reason why something like the PPC is uh, just awesome. And uh, I wouldn't say overpowered, but it definitely is like one of the better weapons I, I find personally. Now, this is just my play style. You know, you might like the auto cannon or whatever, but I also don't like short range weapons. I like weapons where I can attack from a long range for two other reasons. So I'm giving you guys like the whole tactical rundown here of like my mindset, my thinking. Long range weapons are better than short range weapons because if you can destroy an enemy before they get into short range, their short range weapons mean nothing. So I would rather do less damage and be able to attack enemies from a distance and cripple them before they get even near me than to do tons of damage up close but constantly be having to like run up close to enemies. So that's another reason why I gravitate more towards something like the PPC than like an auto cannon because auto cannons I think actually do more damage than the PPC but they're up close weapons. Um, and it's another reason why I like LRMs, even though they have such a long reload time, because um, you can shoot people from so long, so far away, that you can often get two or three shots off before they close the distance. So it's like, yeah, their short range missiles might shoot faster, but they're, they're probably not going to get close enough to use them. So I don't need the speed. So that's my, that's the, that's the tactic we're going to be using today as we eventually build up. Have a new sensor trace. All right, now I'm not going to airstrike the barn because it turns out barns are not sturdy structures. I thought that barn looks steel reinforced to me. I thought that was like a hardened barn, a combat barn, if you will. Turns out it was not. Okay, let's see if we can engage. We're going to try and engage these guys at a medium range. So I held down M there. And so my guys are going to try and maintain a medium range with these guys. Commandos are good short-range units. They have a lot of SRM packs, typically, and lasers. Look at this guy. He's like, why do you guys keep walking away? It's almost like you don't want me to get close enough for me to be able to damage you. Oh, this sucks. Why are all my weapons short-range? All right, he's, he's basically done. I could even capture this with my APC. While my mechs are, like, keeping him busy, the, the APC goes for the barn. Everybody in! It's a barn party. He's very quickly going to scout over here down this road, see if this leads anywhere. Mm, nowhere. Okay. Uh, we have one more area to go to. And I'm going to send my mechs first. My APC will follow up the rear here. Oh, there's a bunch of forest. We could burn this forest down, but that just takes too long. I'm too lazy for that, so. We'll go, we'll go on the road, which is probably clearly a trap. They're probably definitely waiting for us. Uh, oh, there's like a one armored vehicle over there. Okay, there's like a bridge or something over here. You can destroy bridges too. Actually, here, let me show you. Why don't we airstrike this bridge so that nobody can follow us? Uh, 10 seconds. Keep these guys moving while that happens. Four, three, two, one. Kaboom. So yeah, you can destroy bridges. Jump, jump jets in this game are actually very useful. Later in the game, what we'll probably try and do is have like a main squad of really beefy guys to just take down everything. And then we'll have a slightly lighter uh, lance of mechs that are jump capable. Because one thing you can do in this game is like jump into enemy bases and take control of the turrets or the gates and stuff. Turn the enemy's bases defenses against the enemy. And then uh, so if you have like a nimble crew, you can do that. But having a few jump capable mechs is always uh, quite useful. All right, I don't think there's anything else here. We're in such an early mission, probably there's no salvage we could find that would actually be useful, so I probably shouldn't spend too much effort exploring, but whenever I see roads going everywhere, it makes me kind of wonder, like, is there anything cool we could find? Any cool salvage containers? Battletech's all about the salvage. All right, and here's the end of the mission. Did we salvage anything? Oh, we didn't get the Hollander this time. Complete. Mission successful. That sucks.
So the salvage is random. The first time we ran this mission, we got a Hollander. But we kind of airstrike the barn we were supposed to save. So we screwed that up. No Hollander for us. That actually kind of really sucks. The difference between getting like another mech and not getting anything. Link up with Raven, escort Raven to extraction. 115 tons. All right. And can we buy anything? Ooh, we could get a Centurion. But we don't have enough money. Forget oh. about that dream. All right, pair. Let's see if we can buy some components. Any PPCs for sale? Nope. <laughs> they don't want to sell us PPCs. Long range missiles might be useful. Uh, I'll think about it. So how do we want to do this? So we, I think we can fit everyone now. Like if I just, if I throw a mech warrior in this. Hawk reporting. Can everyone fit into this crew? Oh, we can, okay. So in that case, we should definitely. Hawk man, reporting. Hawk is so bad. This is Hunter. Uh, you. This is the beast. Beast, I'm this upgrading beast. you to this and I'm Hawk upgrading reporting. you to this. Can I get some better mech warriors here? These guys all suck. Green, green, green. All right, we need some stuff. Auto cannons. Five and six is not bad, but he can only really equip one auto cannon. Mm -hmm. Okay, we definitely want to want to figure out a better solution than having a bunch of short range missiles. And a heavy flamer, five damage. Not too bad. Um, okay, let's go into purchasing. I'm going to purchase some long range missile packs, I think. We'll buy them all. That light auto cannon suck. Um, maybe I'll buy two heavy flamer. That's just so much money. Whatever, we're going all in. I'm, I'm actually kind of wasting this money because there's not even really a need to do all this this early, but... Uh, all right, we're going... Oh, we need sensors, long-range missiles. Um, actually, maybe... So he, I don't know how many... He has like two, two space left over. I'll try shuffling a few of these things around, see how we can get this to work out. And the LRM packs just, they just don't add up correctly for him. All right, these are my ideal builds, but this guy's all missiles and auto cannons. This guy sort of switched to some LRMs. I don't know. Whatever, we're still early enough in the game that I don't think any of this matters. I'm like, put the amount of thought I'm putting into these loadouts at this stage is uh, more, I think, than you you really need to. We just need to go find Raven and then get the hell out of here. Um, ooh, a container already. Oh, they're destroying the bridge. <laughs> okay. Guess uh, we're not making it over there. But we do have some long range weapons. But we can probably destroy this thing. No problem, sir. He's like trying to chase us away. He's like, you get away from this extraction point. Eat me. Oh, he's almost dead. He's so close. Consider it done. Okay, whatever. We'll we'll finish that guy off. We need to get to him. Um, that is turret command control. So if you had a jump capable mech, you could jump over there and get it. I do not. But I can, I think, do this. Yeah, there we go. So the other thing you can do is just destroy the turret controls, and that will prevent the enemy from, uh, enemy turrets from doing anything. All right. So the turrets are disabled. Off we go. Go find whoever's guarding our raven dude and this is also a gas tank you can blow those up when enemies walk through them and it will obliterate them the trick is not letting the enemy do that to you though um kind of don't want to fight these guys on the bridge because i don't want to accidentally destroy the bridge oh my god i thought i destroyed the bridge right there 
Okay, let's just get across the bridge while we can. See, early on, like, we don't have any mechs with jump jets. If the bridge got destroyed, we would be screwed. We'd be just screwed. Okay, I'm going up this hill. Let's get a let's get a view of what we got going on here. Okay, we got two mechs over there. Ooh, components, components. Definitely want all that. We're gonna go fight those guys. And that bridge is destroyed, so we ain't going there. All right, go fight these guys and steal their stuff. Two LRM packs. Man, the salvage so far sucks. <laughs> it's like garbage. It's like, hey, do you want a couple of LRM packs? Okay, I could engage those guys, but I want, uh, I want to, uh, you know, get everyone together. All right, now we take them out. Where's my fourth guy? There's a straggler somewhere. All right, that guy's done. See, that one PPC shot took him out. It probably hit, like, his torso or his head or something, like... PPCs just kill mechs. Uh, do we get any of that? Nope. Uh, I don't want a couple of scrapped commandos anyway. What I really want to work towards are mad cats. Mad cats are like my favorite mech of this uh, generation battle tech. They're clan mechs. They're like chicken walkers with like marauder style arms and catapult style like missile gun batteries. They look awesome. They're just they're just the best mech. It's funny how when Battletech started out, no they basically problem, used licensed mechs destroyed. from the Macross no Robotech series. Um, and it's like most iconic draw. mechs were like the Warhammer, the Battlemaster, which totally were just Macross mechs. But they eventually created mechs that were, I think, as iconic, if not more iconic, like the Mad Cat. So it's like now Battletech doesn't even need uh, those, those other mechs. They got their own thing going on. Which is good because it took forever for Battletech to get their legitimate license for the Warhammer and stuff recognized because that stupid company, Harmony Gold, kept suing them. Uh, if you don't know the backstory for that, it's a well-known part of Battletech fandom. Uh, the original creators of Battletech licensed these mechs from uh, the creators of Macros. They licensed them legally, but then some troll company card called Harmony Gold kept trying to sue them to stop them from using the mechs because they just wanted money and court case after court case has sided against harmony gold and finally i think nowadays they battletech is allowed to use the warhammer and stuff they use slightly redesigned versions of them i think to make them different enough that they don't have to deal with harmony gold anymore the headache of having to defend the fact that their license is legal but it's like Copyright trolls, man. They suck. They suck. They'll ruin a franchise. They don't care. They don't care. I don't think anyone at Harmony Gold ever played a Battletech game and enjoyed it. Which, uh, those are not the people who should be in charge of Battletech. Hey, we got a clan pulse laser. Guess that's good. Another weapon I'm never gonna use, nor do I, and <laughs> that I don't want also. Um, don't know what those guys are. Yeah, I'm not seeing this raven. Where is this raven guy? He's playing hard to get. Reveal yourself, dude. I'm here to rescue you. Look, there's two vehicles here. We're, we're fighting so few mechs right now. It's actually ridiculous. Mech commander, come and destroy some ill-equipped vehicles. Vehicles not meant to fight giant humanoid walking pieces of armor. No problem. Another one bites the dust. All right, we've explored basically the whole map. Where is the raven? I'm, unless he is in this one corner of the map, I'm kind of confused. Okay, hold on. What did we miss? He can't be over there. Is he, like, hiding over there? Okay, so we could go over there, or we could go up over here. That's literally it. There's there's n literally no other spaces to go to. So he's got to be up here, or he's over here. I guess we will find out either way. Just follow our links here. Actually, he's he's at the back. Where is Hunter? Uh, where is this guy? There we go. We're following the leader of the pack, Hawk. 
Maybe this is the time to zoom in. There you go, that high resolution uh, mech graphics. It's not bad, actually. I mean, like, it definitely seems a little dated. Not horrible. They didn't do it. Oh, there he is. They didn't do a horrible job with this. You little rascal, what are you doing hiding back here? Mystique. Can she jump? No. Okay, we got a problem. All the bridges are out, and I don't know how to get back to, uh... I don't know how to get back to our home territory. What does one do? Is there a way to repair... Mystique, can you repair bridges? Do you have any way to do this? So the Raven has electronic... Uh, sort of sensor suites. My sensors have a new oh, hello. Oh, hi. There's a couple of guys here. I'm under attack. Uh, hold on. Everyone come over here. here. Kill these Fire guys. These guys have jump jets, no problem, so sir. I'm jealous. This is Link. That takes care of him. Um, so the Raven has electronic suites. It can detect enemies farther away. It can detect enemies that are shut down, powered down. Normal mechs can't do that. It also has the enemy ability to detect you. So it sort of stealths you a little bit. Um, practically speaking, I feel like none of those abilities are all that essential to playing this game. But if you wanted to play through sort of being more stealthy, uh, I suppose you could. But again, for me, my, my tactic is just to one shot these enemies, destroy them, obliterate them. Take them down. So I sneaking around. It's not my thing. Not the way I go. Boom! Down he goes. I wonder if we can do this whole game without losing a single mech. It's probably not possible. At some point, we're going to be facing enemies that are powerful enough that they'll take at least one of our dudes down. Yeah! Look at all these free components. Oh, there's even more. What are we getting? Clan LRM packs, heavy flamers. Boy, I'm glad I spent four thousand dollars on heavy flamers last level. What a waste that was. That is the joy of exploring, guys. It's kind of like it com This game combines maybe um, like RPG element, like a very very light RPG, sort of like finding items and stuff. Equipping new items on your characters. It's kind of like that. Are these turrets powered down? They are not. Okay, so here's what you can do. Just capture the turret control. Boom, these turrets work for us now. Only this guy didn't get the memo. He wants to destroy that one still. Because it attacked him. Sometimes your guys do that, but... Um, okay. Everyone, over here. So the circles on the map, by the way are how far away you can detect enemies. So you'll detect them even in the unexplored areas if they're in your circle. And that, it, if I stop my guys from moving, the circles get smaller when they move and they get bigger when they're not moving. And notice the really big one, that's the Raven. So that's how you can tell it's uh, it has really good sensors. Here's a hill. Always go up every hill. Hills are better than sensors, honestly, because like, just reveals so much more. Yeah, there's clearly enemies down there. Once you get into sort of like cement areas, there's often enemies of some kind. Head down here and see what we got. Hello! I'm here to fight you. Oh my god, it's a mad cat. We are gonna fight it. So you could blow up the gas tanks and try and take it down. But I feel like I want to fight it straight up because I want a chance to salvage it. If we could salvage this baby... This would be insane. And we have enough firepower. I'm not too worried about him. Even though it has a couple of PPCs. I'm just going to keep it on salvage there and see what we get. We could even sort of get tactical and send two guys around to the side. Sort of get, do exactly what happened in the opening montage. And I get him going in both directions. Oh, look, he fell down. He's done. Five light mechs. It's actually quite a bit. He was foolish to engage us. Come on, take him down! Take him down! Yes! Bah, no salvage! Oh, it was a dream anyway. It was a bit of a dream. <laughs> Anything down here, though? Where did he come from? Is there a component to salvage? Nothing. Alright, well, we could have just destroyed the gas tank. Would have been an easier way to kill him, I guess, but who cares? 
Who cares? We got to see a bit of a fight. And there's a component warehouse right here for capture. Is there a mad cat in here? I'll take it. I will take it. I like how you can capture this warehouse when nobody's around. And then it's like captured forever. Like if the enemies come back, you don't lose it. They're sort of like, ah, well, he got it fair and square. We'll let him have whatever was in there. We got a, ooh, we got a PPC, sweet, and a large Mission pulse laser. Complete. Mission Boom. Successful. Now we get a little rundown of everything that we did. Commendation for low drop weight. Oh, commendated even. All right, everyone's looking, notice they're getting a little bit of experience here and there. We need to, what is this? So every, every operation has like four or five, or maybe even six missions. Once we finish this operation, that's going to be it for today. So we're a mission or two off from being done for today. Which is kind of sad. I was hoping to get something big and powerful like a uh, Marauder. Ooh, we got a jump base commando. <laughs> like I care about that. Can we buy any cool mechs? Are any big guys for sale? We can get a Hunchback, a Centurion. Eh. Eh. All right. Destroy the clan base headquarters. Withdraw to extraction point for recovery. Defend allied support building okay not too bad um going so we are allowed to bring 200 tons so just looking at our max 50 60 uh it's like a we have like 155 tons maybe we will buy a mech maybe we will buy a mech hmm I don't know if these guys are worth it, though. I kind of want to save my money. I wouldn't mind buying, like, uh... Like a catapult. Or a Jaeger mech. Forget about buying mechs, you know, let's just... Whatever. We'll, uh... We'll pull this jump-capable commando out of, uh... Mothballs, how about that? refit all. I wish there was a button called strip where you could strip off all the components that you don't want because I definitely didn't want all those short range weapons on that uh, that dude. Buy a couple of these. So we will need sensors for the various mechs that we recover off the battlefield eventually. Man, we lost access to a Hollander and a Mad Cat. So sad. I suppose we could just keep reloading the previous uh, game until we got the uh the uh mad cat but that somehow feels like cheating probably because it is cheating <laughs> you know what i mean we're not gonna do that we have more honor than that not much more but we have some uh pulse laser do not want i put on two of these there we go all right, clan LRM packs way less, so that is useful. Laser PPC, two LRM packs, that's pretty good. Uh, this guy can go like that. And then I don't know what else he can fit. What's the heaviest thing he can put on? Uh, pulse laser? Whatever. Sure. Um, these guys are okay, so this guy just needs to be equipped with stuff. Flamers. I'm gonna swap these out for LRM packs. So he can actually do something. And... Okay, this guy. Large pulse laser. Yeah. He can have just an auto cannon. Uh, I don't know, I'm not opposed to that. Not like... Large pulse laser and then LRM pack. Okay. So we're already starting to transition out of short range weapons. In fact, these things might be holding us back. Although I have no alternative. Still no alternative. Wait, can I purchase a PPC? Are those for sale yet? Uh, not for sale. Damn, I just want some medium range weapons. Is that like so difficult? 
Maybe could I just make like an LRM boat out of one of these guys? How about purchasing? Can I buy some LRM packs? Long range missiles. <laughs> nope. <laughs> they do not want you engaging in, in long range tactics. All right, three LRM packs and a laser, fine. Whatever, this is all fine. Um, you know what, whatever. One guy will have a heavy flamer just in case people get close. What did he have? He had a heavy flamer. Yes, sir, impact. Let's go into purchasing and sell a bunch of stuff. Like, we do not need five of these things. Uh, we don't need four of these. We're never going to use that. Uh, we don't need ten of these. Uh, what else don't we want? I never use light autocannons, so forget it. There we go. All right, we have we have some stuff. We have some stuff. We just need to put. Uh, oh, we need to purchase a mech warrior. Okay, let's buy the most experienced guy we can find, which is no one. Oh god, these guys all suck. I guess I will this is take gunman. you, gunman. Yes, sir. Your lucky day, bud. This is gunman. All right, welcome to the team, gunman. Okay, links. You, oh, we didn't re-equip the, uh, the Raven. Do we want to even do that? Uh, well, we don't want these. Oh, but we don't have any long-range weapon alternatives. Uh, okay. How about you just... That. Sure. Uh, let's leave these. If I had, like, more long-range missile packs or something, maybe I would bother... Um, trying to, you know, play around with the stuff that, uh, you know, the Raven has equipped, but there's no point. Um, okay. I don't even know if I've made up good teams here. PPC, PPC. That's kind of our heavy hitting team. Maybe we'll do it like this. And then these two guys are kind of like the long range team. Actually, no, more like this. I don't even know. You know what? Whatever. <laughs> I'm thinking too much about this. All right. What was our mission again? We had to uh, destroy the base headquarters and then withdraw and protect the support buildings. That building right there. Okay. We just don't let that get destroyed. Hopefully nobody comes from behind and destroys it. No problem, sir. Oh, those are short-range missile carriers. Good thing we focused them down. Those are like uh, wind turbines or something. Good. What we got going on over here? I should pay more attention to the maps. In the mission briefings, they show you the maps and they show you like the whole layout of the terrain. I should pay attention in case there's like bases way over here that might have some stuff worth capturing. Right down that guy goes. <laughs> we have some small strikes we can use. The one thing you can do after you destroy this base is I bet destroy the bridge so no one can follow you. But I think instead we'll just kill everyone. Because you know what? You can't salvage you can't salvage enemy mechs if you don't destroy them. So it's kind of an ingenious way of making you want to destroy all the enemies is to uh, you know, make it so that you actually can salvage the enemies you destroy. Especially when you see a powerful mech, you don't shy away from that battle. You're like, yes, I want this. I want to fight you. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and lure this mech away from his base. He has a long-range autocannon, but it's pretty weak, so I think we're okay. Okay, we'll destroy this guy. He seems to be limping or something. Okay, now while that is happening, where is the guy with jump jets? This is him. I'm gonna make him his own team. And we're going to see if he can jump in here. Cause some havoc. Hoyo! Okay, they are firing at him. He might have lured them away. Oh no, he fell! Run! Gunman, run, I'm sorry! 
assignment here. Enemy vehicle All right, my plan was to have him jump in the base and capture stuff, but there's actually enemies there. New plan is I'm just going to nuke the uh, tower controls. This is the beast. They're coming after me. Here, another one might Kaboom! Die. Kaboom! All right, no more turrets. Let's kill these guys. Starting with you, Striker. Boom! All right, get in here. So this is the gate control. Oh, there's no crew in that. I was like, why is this tank not attacking me? So the gates will open and close for friendly units. Um, even no capture problem, all this. Oh, capture this Good first. Enemy capture, enemy capture, enemy capture. Enemy you can also blow up this fuel truck if you want, and it would probably blow up the whole base. You can also blow up the main power, and that would power down the whole base. So there's many ways to sort of attack a base. Now that we control these turrets, though, obviously I don't want to destroy the main power. Um, oh, damn it. No! Uh, I should have left a unit behind. I think I have a contact. Okay, we've definitely... You know what? We're not, we're not going to complete that objective. This is I have Unless I can do this in time. My sensors have a contact. Or... Crap. One. Oh, it actually would have worked to do that. Okay, whatever. We're, we're letting that one go. Yes, we're letting that one no go. Problem, we failed. Sorry. I wasn't paying enough attention. We failed at that. No problem, okay. We lost a little bit of money. Withdraw to extraction. Like, I'm kind of curious, like, what is in the rest of the map? This this is probably our last or second last mission. So I'm just going to take one sec here to see what else is in there. Because, like, my crew's in, besides gunmen, my crew's in great shape. Everyone's still got plenty of ammo, plenty of fight in them. Maybe there's an extra base over here that has, like, I don't know, say, like, a mad cat I could fight and salvage. <laughs> like, my dream. I'm not giving up on that. I want all of the smoke jaguar mad cats. One mad cat would make me so powerful, especially if I could salvage it with its weapons. Like, it's not going to have all its weapons, but if I could get one or two clan ER PPCs. Like, you know. See, I should have I should have unlocked this this big area of vision before I went into the base, so I could have seen these guys sneaking up. That was so stupid. You know what? We you live, you learn. You live, you learn. L I I was playing the uh, the expansion uh, campaign before I sat down to record for you guys today. I was playing it just for fun, and I was experimenting with uh, the controls, and I accidentally went into long range attack and I tried to click to select one of my own guys and everyone in my crew shot him and destroyed him. So I have since learned not to do that. So you live, you learn. Mistake. We lost a secondary objective. Things could be far worse. Things could be far worse. Okay, I don't really see any bases. I could keep going, but forget it. You bastard. You destroyed my command post. Uh, it was. It would have been so easy to defend that. One strike would have saved me. And I, I totally bungled it. Totally bungled it. All right, Raven. You're holding us up. Hey, get over here. <laughs> You're holding Mission up the crew. Complete. Mission there we successful. go. All right, so we missed out on like, I don't know, 5,000 RPs or something. Whatever RP stands for. Commendation for Reputation points, I guess. Hey, look, we lost 7,000, but we gained six. So there you go. It, everything kind of worked out. Oh, we even got an Uller and a Clan ER laser and sensors basic. Cool. All right, so we got some stuff. Would like a medium mech, but, uh, you know, defend both farms. Okay. Hey, what does that say? A mine layer? Mine layers can be used to lay down a field of mines. Oh, it wants us to use mine layers. Okay. Now... If you look here, that looks like an enemy base right there. We might try and send a crew up there to see what we can see. Maybe capture some supplies. See, I need to pay more attention to this uh, this map here before we go in. All right, 240. Everyone goes in. What are we at weight-wise? Oh, man, we have tons of weight. We have, like, 70 extra tons. 70 extra tons to go on. 
We could buy... They want us to buy a mine layer. They only cost 9,000. Sure. You know what? I'll take it. And in terms of... Neck Bay... There's my mine layer. Go ahead and throw it in force number three. All right. Now, are there any cool mechs to buy? Hey, we can buy a Raven now. A Hollander. How much did that weigh? That because we almost had one. A forty-five tonner. Yeah, missed out there. That would be nice. All right, we're we're all salvage. We don't buy mechs. We just uh, repair and refit. Get out of here. Um, let's repair this, repair this. Anyone else need repairs? I also wish there was a repair all button, because this is a little tedious. All right. Purchasing. We need long-range missiles, PPCs. No PPCs. Only two long-range missiles. Sell them to me. And let's get this going. Long-range missile, long-range missile. God. I'm tempted to put an auto cannon on this guy. An auto cannon and an LRM pack. Is that even good? Intermediate sensors. Oh, just basic. Um. Hmm. 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 You know what? We need a mech warrior. We're gonna do this. Guess we will get siren. Ooh, Countess. Oh, look. This is Countess. As We're finally orders, getting sir. some decent guys. Okay, Countess. Sure. This is Put you in this one. Who has a PPC? You. Oh, he actually has quite a bit of gunning experience. You guys are actually getting fairly decent. Okay, let's say. Hog reporting. Oh, no. This is Hitman. There you go, Hitman. All right. Uh, you know what? That's good enough. I'm not going to fiddle around with this too much. Hitman. Boom, boom, boom. Ah, oh, we're exactly at 240. Perfect. Uh, just let me make sure these are the right teams. Everyone is kind of built the same way, so it kind of doesn't matter. You can mix and match them. Although this team seems a little weaker. Should be fine, though. All right, whatever. Let's do it. Mech I won't overthink it. Oh, uh, I, I left the mine layer down there by itself. Okay, you go over here. And you guys go up here. And the mine layer is going to wait for the team to come rescue him. So these are the things we have to protect. This. This. All right. Um, I'm going to send the mine layer up here. You know what's funny? I have no idea how to lay mines. <laughs> I don't know how to tell them to do stuff. Medium, short. Uh-huh. Maybe he just lays mines as he moves. Uh, I'm like trying the buttons. I have no idea. Could actually be a problem. So we might have some dead weight on the team if I can't figure out how to actually lay mines. Okay, these guys are coming up though. These guys are bringing the fight to the enemy. So are these guys actually. I guess you don't need mines if the if you just roam the map and just take enemies out before they even get close to you. I've got a new contact. That's that's an alternative way that we can play this level. Oh crap, they're coming. I'm under they're attack. coming. Beast here, another one bites the dust. All right, but we're not we're not going back. We're going all in. I have a new contact on my screen. What is that? Beast Salvage here. rig. Countess here, reporting new uh oh. Contact. Um. Okay, we have we have the capacity to strike. Yes, yeah, so everyone get close together. I've got a new sensor tray. Three, two, one. Ah, stay in the kill zone. Okay, kill these guys. 
You. So this guy. What are these? These are just empty trucks. Salvage through. Ooh, resource warehouse. I will take that. Okay, and that is done. I went over here. Alright, bit of a mess. But whatever. We got it. <laughs> sort of. Okay, let's figure out how to do this. Okay, I just had to pause and look this up. Apparently, you just hold the F key. If you come over here. And yeah, there you go. All right. We are laying mines. Perfect. Mines are actually crippling, honestly. Like, I have played some missions before where I'm not paying attention and I just run through a minefield and they they actually do cripple you. It is uh, pretty devastating. Um, all right. Anything cool to salvage? Gonna have my guys running around the map, actually. I guess in this mission, you're supposed to basically just stay put and protect the farms, but it seems better to me to... Because this game doesn't have fog of war, so once an area is explored, you can, like, see through it forever. But kind of seems better to me to uh, sort of map out the area so you can see enemies coming from a long way away. And also see if there's anything worth capturing. There is not... This game doesn't really use terrain all that much. Like in the actual Battletech game, being in forests and stuff makes you take less damage and it's harder for you to get hit, but uh, it's harder or you're slower to move and stuff. But in this game, it's like you can't even go in the forest. You just have to burn it down if like you want to go through it. Uh, we will also mine over here. So this farmhouse in here is basically being protected by the mine layer. Which means these guys are free to go and fully explore. We are we are apparently at a huge lull in the battle, too. I think those those few enemies that we encountered were supposed to be like a big invading force, but we kind of wiped them out accidentally. And very easily. So we'll just uh, continue exploring over here. What we got going on? Hello! Is anyone gonna attack? I got this fancy mine layer and everything. And he has mined the crap out of this area. Oh, we got some enemies. Ooh, okay. Everyone come down here. We'll ambush these guys. In the mine layer? Oh, the, if the mine layer can get up there in time, he can actually totally lay down some mines. I think this mine layer is disposable. He was only 9,000 bucks, so if he dies, I don't care. We're gonna, get, we're gonna get him to try and lay mines in combat. Oh, these are... This guy is a short-range brawler. Oh god, and he's getting... He is getting close. Oh, but we took him out! Boom, boom! These are all like little uh, hovercraft vehicles. Oh, look at that. You're totally derelict in your job, mine layer. He's laying mines now after the fact. He's like, uh, oops. Kind of let some enemies go through there, guys. My bad. Right. One other thing that about this game that's kind of not annoying, but like I wish my guys did a better job of is like those guys were totally in range of those enemies and they just stood there and let them attack. Like the AI is not very aggressive when it comes to uh, targeting um, targeting enemy units that are in range. Like if you don't tell them to attack, sometimes they just straight up don't attack. Anyway, you can see enemies coming way down over there. So, hence the importance of good scouting in this game. I, th I feel like everywhere I mine is like where the enemies, where the last enemies came and like nobody knew was going to come from there, but whatever. We're going to go ahead and mine the crap out of this map because we paid for a mine layer and god damn it, we're going to use it. Mine, mine. Nobody's getting through here. Like a heavily mined area. 
I would like to just see one enemy go on one of my mines. That would make me happy. Man, this like whole field is mine. What is this? Uh, it's, ooh, cougars. Oh no, one cougar and an uller. And they are coming around the right way. So mines wreck havoc on mech's legs. And yeah, these things do like a ton of damage. Eh, might as well mine over here too. All right, there's no way those those mechs if they come through this passage they're basically dead there's this huge open area over here maybe we can get over there and mine that too we might have enough time uh okay that's that's pretty good you've you've done a good job there you uh you let the team down initially mine layer dude but you're bringing it back now you have the biggest mine laying job of your career you have to mine this whole gap I won't make you mine this one over here, though. Oh, they are actually coming this way. So it's good that this guy's here doing it. And there's more guys coming. Maybe I should get into position. What is this? Oh, that guy's just straight up dead. <laughs> All right, never mind. Well, we got to see the uh, the effects of the mines. Ooh, there's two more mechs coming. Like, I'm not worried about any of this, because this is all so heavily mined. <laughs> what are they going to do? Oh, here here they come. You want to destroy my mine layer? They actually could. Boom. Executing your order. Run, mine layer. Run! You were not trained for this. Oh, they're going right around the mines. Those guys are smart. All right, we actually have to uh, split our forces up here. Proceeding as ordered. Kaboom, kaboom. Kaboom, stay away from my farm. Oh my god, they actually we have a we have a fracas here. We have a fracas. There's a bit of combat going on in here. Woo! It's actually kind of cool. It's like the coolest brawl we've ever had going on in this game. Kaboom! Just combat in every direction! Tactical battle tech action to the max! And of course, we're winning, which makes it way more fun. Yeah, we crushed them! Demolished them. That was an awesome battle to end on, actually, for that mission. Boom, boom, he's a veteran. He's a, He got upgraded to regular. Regular, regular, green. Nobody's elite yet. Ooh, we got a hunchback. Cougar, a fire starter, two Ulers, holy crap. We cleared house on that one. All right, one last mission of Operation Beachhead here. I'm positive this is now the last one. Destroy all enemy mechs. <laughs> wow, destroy all enemy mechs defending the industrial zone. We can do this. 300 tons. So if we throw everyone in, let's just see what kind of tonnage we're at. I'm just throwing everyone in randomly. See how much extra tonnage we have. We have 100 extra tons. We can make some major upgrades, and we have a 50-tonner. I think it's time to bring the 50-tonners into the mix. We're going to get rid of this, and this, and this, and this. No heavy auto cannons. We want long-range mechs. Let's go into purchasing and see if purchasing is finally willing to sell some good stuff. Still no PPCs. Still no LRMs, you bastards. All right. Well, we'll make do. Okay, so oh, we can toss one LRM rack in there, an auto cannon, basic sensors. Let's see what else we got going on in here first. Prepare all our mechs. Oh, you know, I'm really struggling. I don't have enough long range equipment to really throw anything useful on this guy. I have no PPCs. All the weapons I have are short range. I kind of feel like what is the point even? We want medium to long range stuff. So I guess we will have a, a mech who doesn't really have much to do. There must be something medium range we can buy. Let's see here. Large lasers. We have an auto cannon. I would love a PPC. Can't get a hand, our hands on any of those. Light auto cannons useless. <laughs> Put a sensor suite on him. I don't know. I mean, we could we could just not even take them. 
maybe we could just make a ton of money. Although, actually, hold on. Hold on. Can we just buy a mech that has long range stuff? See, what we want is a catapult. Six LRM racks. That is. That's where it's at. We could buy the W variant of a Centurion. That comes with a PPC, actually. And an LRM rack. Uh, wait. Okay, hold on. I have an idea. I think this guy. Okay, let's let's look at these mechs that we salvage. See if they have any weapons worth taking off. Anything. Ooh, we have an ER laser. We'll definitely take that off. And nothing. Okay. So in terms of this guy, we have an ER laser we can toss on. Give him a bit more range. I'm legit thinking we should just purchase a Centurion that has a PPC purely for the PPC. So that's what we're going to do. Spending half of our money. Maybe it's not smart. I don't know. I'm doing it because it's fun. And actually, oddly enough, we might just take him out as is. Might leave him as stock. Um, and this guy, I don't know, dude. What do you want? What do you want to have equipped? Plan pulse laser? Sure, whatever. I I don't even care at this point. In fact, we don't even have enough mech warriors for this. For this little strategy here. Let's throw Hitman. Hitman, Hitman into the Centurion. Let's throw... Who else was experienced? Let's this throw is Countess. Countess into the Hunchback. All right, who we got left? We definitely want to bring one of Hulk these reporting. guys. Yes, sir. And we're throwing a green pilot in. Can we purchase a better pilot? Anyone else in here who's kind of good? This is Scarab. Scarab, you're hired, Scarab. dude. This is Scarab. All right. Let's see what we got going on now. Okay, we take everyone out. So we have Hitman and Countess bringing up the A team and the 55 tonners. And we're going to bring in these guys. Bring in this guy. Bring in these guys. Okay, we have enough space for everyone, basically. So, all right. I was originally considering if we didn't have enough room for one of the mechs, we could scrap some of the parts like the long range weapons off one of the mechs, but whatever, I think this looks pretty good. So those are the heavy hitters and they have some support guys. These guys are also pretty heavy hitters. All right, let's, let's do it. Commencing deployment. Mech warriors prepare for combat. I think I have a contact. All right, everyone engage. This is a straight on base assault. We're just going to take on Everything that moves. If it if it moves, kill it. Uh, one of these guys, by the way, can totally jump. Wonder if we can get him to jump up this mountain. You like going for a jump? Oh, he totally can. Ah, perfect. This is gunman, I'm and get the hell out of there, dude. All right, so we spotted a trap. I've got a new sense oh, and look at that. Interesting. Oh, they're still attacking him. What the hell? Run over here. Lure them into into a quick death. So if we had jump jets, we could probably jump around this whole base. Okay, these guys are just taking fire. You guys have weapons. Can you guys fire back, please? There we go. Wonder if we can find a way around this. Center contact. Oh, yes, we can. All right, we're going to go up the mountain. And we're going to sneak into the enemy base from behind. Oh, no, wait, that's... We can't get in there. Hmm. Okay, maybe we'll just do a frontal assault. Easily done, sir. Dead on, sir. We got all these guys. Enemy vehicle destroyed. Boom, boom. Got my number. Kaboom! I think I have a contact. <laughs> like how all the pilots are fleeing. Don't kill us! Why would we engage eight small but heavily armed mechs? Alright, I think we just gotta go for it. Whatever. I mean, I could do an airstrike, I guess, but... Why? 
We have speed on our side. We're just gonna straight up run into their base. Running all in. You know, when this game came out, it was actually like pretty, pretty awesome. Um, all things considered, like in order to be able to play BattleTech, you know, like in real time. Uh, what are these guys doing over here? Help this guy. Help him get in the gates. One of my guys got left on the other side of the gates. There we go. Go, 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 go! Everybody run! Kill these things. <laughs> the fact that you have to, like, individually target these. I'm like, can't you guys figure it out? Just, just fire. Just attack. I think maybe the guard button, if I hit guard, then they'll sort of attack anything they encounter. Maybe I should be do- maybe it's my fault. Yeah, back when this game came out, it was, like, pretty awesome to see all this Battletech stuff in real time. It's interesting how, like, I feel like... Not not like people ever disliked turn-based stuff, but... Certainly, I think in the 90s and 2000s, people were really fascinated with real-time. Everyone wanted everything to be real-time. Um, nowadays, I think there's... Things have kind of reverted back, like people are enjoying the turn-based stuff again, which is why I think the modern Battletech game that came out by Hairbrain Studios... I think that one is... It is turn-based, and people, like, quite like that. Um, I think, because once you get turn-based, it's easier to be more true to the board game. Um, it's easier to be more methodical um, in your tactics. Like, I think this game airs on the side of easy. Uh, it's actually not that hard of a game, but it's done that way because I think it's just too chaotic to try and control, like... You know, 12 mechs precisely in the middle of combat. You know, when mechs can take so much damage, they die in a few seconds. They, the developers wisely realized, hey, if we stick really strictly to the uh, to the rules of BattleTech, this is going to not really work out very well for the players. Oh, they all walked out of the uh, the engagement area. That's annoying. Take these guys down. Kaboom! Kaboom! See, look, this is how this is how fast the enemies go down. If you focus fire them, like this guy, these guys have no weapons. <laughs> Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? This guy's leg is damaged. He can't escape if he wanted to. Boom! Yeah, once you start focusing firing down enemies, like we have eight eight mechs all firing at one enemy. It's like, the mechs just aren't designed to withstand that much firepower. If our guys engaged honorably, like in a one-on-one -on -one manner, the computer ha would have way more of a chance. But the way we're fighting, we're just focusing enemies down. So even, even these light mechs pack a lot of punch because there's just so many of them. Like the full arsenal of all eight of them just raining down. Raining down on them. Ooh, a catapult. I definitely want that. I'm gonna take out the uh, LRMs first. Everybody come running over this way, and now take out the catapults! And not so much that we can't salvage it, damn it! We want that thing. What have we gotten so far? Ooh, we got two PPCs. Oh, we got a catapult! Holy crap! Yeah! That was so easy! And we got a catapult. I am excited for that. We even got a commendation. Beastly. That was, that's how you end. That's how you end a mission. All right, so that successfully wraps up Operation Beachhead. As you can see, we're now on Skyhook. And so again, this game is divided into about five different uh, sort of campaigns. And each campaign has a multiple uh, set of missions. And once you beat it, you move on to the next one. There is an operational briefing. Incoming transmission. But if you want to see it, you're going to have to wait until the next video where we actually begin Operation Skyhook. So I just wanted to quickly come here so that we could uh, just bask in the glory of our salvage. We have salvaged a catapult. And also we have a bunch of PPCs. I'll give you guys a little preview of what's coming in the next video. How about we take off these useless uh, lasers. There are a couple of PPCs on this bad boy. Okay, why is that not going? There we go. Double PPC, three LRMs. This guy's a beast. 
he could basically he he'll be able to one shot units by the time we're done so we got some exciting battles coming up if you guys have been enjoying this let's play of mech commander don't forget to like the video and all that jazz and i will be back in a week with part two so until then my friends it's been fun and remember no guts no galaxy peace This is the beast, this is the beast, this is the beast, this is the beast, this is the beast. Track that pod.